So as we're working around and getting the harness taken off from the intake, you'll notice that there's a lot going on in this area. We are spending a lot of time here. It's mainly because what we're trying to do is to get access to the bracket. We don't want anything attached to the intake because the intake's coming off. So as we remove layers, we get down to another layer. For example, once this harness is off, we'll get down to the bracket. Items like that. If you just follow the steps, you won't have any problems. It looks like a lot going on here, but if you do everything in an order, basically like I'm showing you, it'll be cut and dry. So what we're gonna do now is we'll move over to the plastic fastener that keeps the harness up against a bracket. Once that's released, we'll lift up on the harness because there's an alignment pin right here that keeps it straight down on top of the intake. Now we're gonna work on basically disconnecting two things. We've got a vacuum pump over here that's got a harness. It's a single lock. Press in, pull it off. As you see, we're opening up a layer here. We've also got the EGR valve we've got to disconnect. Once we do that, we're getting a better position to get to the bracketry and also no longer will anything be attached to the front of the intake. So that I can get better access to that connector on the EGR valve. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna lift up on the harness and pull it towards the front. We're gonna go over the EGR valve basically. And we're gonna have access to this connector right here. Now this connector has two locks, just like the rest of the stuff we had come across already. Difference is, this one has a gray color lock instead of red, but the way it operates is exactly the same. We're going to use something like a flat tip screwdriver and we're going to lift up. Once we lift up, we can push in and release the connector. Now that we've got the harness repositioned, we can clearly see where the bracket is right here. Now this is the bracket that attaches the upper intake to the cylinder head. We've got a 10 millimeter nut will be taken off right here on the stud and that 10 millimeter bolt. Those two will come off and then the bracket can be taken off and set somewhere where we will not lose it. If you look right below the EGR valve here, you'll see an aluminum bracket. It goes over to a coolant pipe. There's a stud that comes off, and on that stud is a 10 millimeter nut. We need to back that nut off. So that nut removed, what we'll do is we'll grab that bracket and we'll slide it off the stud. There you have it. Now we got one more bracket we need to deal with and it's on the right side of the engine. It's a bracket that has two 10 millimeter bolts. We got one right here you can see and on the back side behind the oil dipstick tube we've got another one and I'll show you where that one is. To get to them what I recommend using is a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench and get right down in there get to it easily. Just make sure right before you get it off that you don't drop it. So just go ahead and take those two 10 millimeters off. And here's the other 10 millimeter, like I said, back behind the old dipstick, right there. That's the second one we need to take off. So we got one more hose. We only got one more hose we need to take loose. And it's on the back side of the intake. Right here, this green item that you're seeing here, those are locks for a plastic hose. That hose goes over to your brake booster. Now on the green piece, what you're going to do is you're going to squeeze in on the top and the bottom or wherever the green portions are, the little squares. That's the quick release. As you press in, you can slide it off. So no clamps to worry about. There you have it, we've got that one off. Once we get the intake off, I'll show you a little bit closer what it looks like. Now right here at the back side of the EGR valve, we've got that rubber hose. Looks about the same diameter as a radiator hose. And it's got your typical radiator hose spring-loaded clamp. We've gotta release that. Once we release it, we'll slide it down past the portion of the EGR valve that the hose goes on. Just grab your typical radiator hose pliers or just some typical pliers if that's all you have and get down on there. All I want to do for now is just reposition it out of the way. Now we're not going to necessarily fight with this hose right now. What we'll do is wait till that upper intake's been unbolted and we can start repositioning it. Then we got a little more access to get in there and wiggle everything. So we finally reached a point where we can actually unbolt the upper intake from the lower. We've got a total of eight 
eight millimeter bolts going around the perimeter right here. We got one on the back side, it's a little hard to see. We got one right below the wiper area that's a little bit tight as far as clearances. Go ahead and start backing those all the way off. And before we go lifting up on the intake assembly and fighting with this hose for the jar valve, what I recommend doing is breaking the hose loose. Now you use your typical hose pick. This is what you would use on a radiator hose or any kind of larger diameter hose such as this or even a heater hose. What you do is you work it between the component and the hose and you work around the outer perimeter. Because these hoses have a tendency to want to stick on to whatever they're mounted to. So it's best to go ahead and get it broke loose now. That way all you have to do is pull it off of the component instead of trying to actually break it loose at the same time. So just try to go around as much of the perimeter as you can. Yeah. Now we've got the upper intake off, you can get a better view of what that brake booster plastic line looks like and it's locked that you have to release. You'll see the two green squares on the top and bottom. That's where you place a finger on both of them and press in and that will release it so you can slide it off of its fitting. Going back on, you just slide it till it snaps in. At this point, grab you a couple rags and shove them down inside the intake ports because we don't want anything falling down inside while we're working on it. Now you can remove the foam pad so you get a little more access to everything. Make sure you go back with this though. Now on this particular engine, it's on the right side, not the left. With the intake off, now we have the ability to actually perform the inspection for the recall. What we're looking for is the plastic line that joins both the left side fuel rail and the right side fuel rail. We want to make sure there's no damage to that line. And the area we're going to be paying attention to is the right rear corner of the intake. So here's a closer look of what we're having to inspect. We've got our lower intake right here. We've got the 8 millimeter bolt that would go from the upper intake into the lower. And we've got our fuel rail right here. The fuel line that goes into it. We're looking for damage in this general area. As you can see, everything seems to be intact on this one. So this one's fine. If there was damage, you would see some chewed up plastic in this area, and that would mean replacement of the fuel rail assembly. So now all we need to do is go back with the upper intake and reinstall everything and give it back to the customer. So at this point, we're ready to reinstall the upper intake to the lower. Make sure you remove those rags that we put in there so that nothing would get into the lower intake ports. Also make sure there's no wiring and also no hoses that's gonna be in the way. So when you go back down in there, it's nice and flush and tight and we're not pinching anything. What I wanna go ahead and do is give you the sequence to tighten the bolts in and also the torque specs. And that's gonna be for the upper intake to the lower intake. Now this is gonna be the sequence or the order in which you need to tighten the upper intake bolts to the lower. This is the throttle body, so this is gonna be the front of the engine. So we're gonna start with number one two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we're going to end up here at eight. And the specs that we're going to tighten these down to are 89 inch pounds. Now here's a little tip when you're going back with the plastic cover. Look on the back side you'll see the four rubber bushings I was telling you about. Get you a little light coat of grease, smear it on the inside of each one of these, so that when you go to line it up with those plastic studs, it's just a matter of gently pushing down and it should snap in place fairly easy. So now you see what it takes to actually do the inspection on that recall. That's why it's gonna take anywhere from an hour to two hours for that technician to take care of that. Now, if anything is found to be wrong, such as any damage to that plastic fuel line, then of course parts will have to be ordered, and that may take a day or two. So at this point, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget you can check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you got any comments or suggestions about today's recall on the S85 that we just discussed, or anything Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram related, you know you can always email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com and I'll try to get back to you in a timely manner. Once again, everybody, thanks for watching these videos and make sure to subscribe.